Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I want to thank you for dropping by this video so I can talk to you about how I have jobs like this Simple 25 dropping in my lap for a cool 60 bucks. The whole point of this video is to teach you how to set up your CNC interest into revenue generating stream that has a good solid foundation behind it where the business will start coming to you as opposed to you chasing the business which is much much harder. Before I get into the story of this and talk to you about what I am doing to build that foundation so the business comes to you. I want to share with you what my channel is about. I do two things. I teach the beginner how uh, all things CNC so that they can become an expert in their field above the rest, right? And the other is to how to turn it into a revenue generating money making business. So if you are interested in earning income with a CNC, then you may want to uh, subscribe to this channel. Also, I've started a CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group because there was no support out there. So I started it. Uh, the link is down below and you can uh, sign up for it there. Word of warning, don't just try to sign up without answering questions because I will not uh, accept it. There's two people I've declined because they didn't answer questions. I take this very seriously. I want to give you my knowledge, my skills, so you can become very successful in your CNC interest. It doesn't matter if it's a CNC laser etcher, CNC laser cutter, CNC plasma cutter, CNC router, CNC machine, anything. You can make money off of it. And I want to teach you how. So let's walk into the whole story from the beginning of how I am building up this foundation in CNC business to get a job like that to come to me. The really important business aspects that nobody teaches. I've looked at video after video like everybody has on YouTube and it's just not out there. So I'm going to be the teacher of that. What qualifies me? I've been in CNC machining or was in CNC machining for um, 20 years. Then I was an engineering process manufacturing engineer for another 20. I've started two companies and I've sold many ideas to companies. I got a love of woodwork and I've got all this knowledge in my head that I want to give to you so you can become an expert CNC. -er. Let's dive into the story right from the beginning because that's where you're at. Two months ago, I moved into this town. I didn't know anybody. I had didn't even have a CNC router, had no business. Uh, going on. I just knew I was going to start a business. I'm going to build the foundation and I'm going to turn it into a very lucrative business. How do you do that? Well, let's just tell a story so you understand my mindset, my method of thinking, so you can get this in there, into your head. I'm in this town and I have to get to know where the money's at and start building relationships with those people the movers and shakers of the money who are going to be interested in the craft of the CNC world. So I decided to walk around town and start to talk to people in the businesses. And eventually I got to, to the owners, right? And so two or three or four times, sometimes you have to go to the businesses before you get to the owners. And when I'm talking to them, I just start talking to them about their business. How, how did you start your business? What, what, do you, you know, what are you doing? What are your trials and tribulations? How are things going with the coronavirus with you? Blah, 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 right? And people are going to be willing to share their stories if you are showing an interest in them. Let me get this one point really clear, straight in your face right now. If you go into a business or go to people and say, I have a CNC laser cutter and I cut out things like this, do you have any jobs that you want me to do? They're gonna say no. You're being a car salesman, okay? You have to build the rapport and the relationships with the people. So you have to be a little bit patient and have interest in them. So ask them questions, get to know them, and then share a little bit about you. Do a lot of agreeing with them. When they say something, whether you agree or not, if you want the business, you're going to have to agree a little bit with them. And ask about them. Eventually, as, as long as you're asking questions, i got to throw this in. The person who's asking the questions controls the conversations. The person who asks the questions navigates the entire conversation to where you want it to go. But you got to do it smoothly and with integrity. So with this guy, I'm in this framing shop, and I, I had been practicing with the CNC and I was engraved on glass with my CNC. In a framing shop, he frames pictures for uh, uh, $200 to $2,000, um, but he deals with glass, right? So, I, okay, I'm going to tap into his knowledge. And so I went into a shop and said, I, I need your knowledge. And so we got to talking about it. Uh, and he told me about glass. 
everything's got interesting stuff. So I learned a lot about glass. But along the conversation, I told him what I'm doing, and I was taking pictures of everything I had, had been doing so I could show him. This is another tip. Take pictures of everything you do. You will need them. So anyway, by the end of this conversation, he said, can you like engrave my name on a piece of glass? Said, well, yeah, I can give it a whirl. And so he gave me a piece of glass, and I went to my computer and started to design this thing up. And then I added value. Okay, so you always give more than what is being asked. He wanted his business name on a piece of glass. I added a little tiny swirl underneath the name. Took it back to him and said, is this what you were looking for? And, you know, I kind of got this like this. And he said, wow, that's really cool. And he noticed the swirl. Okay, he thought that was cool. So that little extra value is always noticed. Then he started talking to me about his wife. He said, I, I was thinking about making one of those uh, wine cork containers. I don't know if you've seen it uh, where people, uh, wine drinkers, they like to collect their corks. So they got these little boxes with a hole in the top and glass in the front. He said, can you etch anything on glass like that? And I said, well, sure. What do you want on it? And I don't know. He said, what's her name? Uh, Stephanie. And tell me about her. You know, and we got to a point where we said, let's personalize this to her. And he's going, wow, that's a really cool angle. Right, so now I'm getting credibility with him. So I'm gonna break for just a second. I wanna say, this may sound a little like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And I'm talking about how important it is to build that foundation that's going to build a lot more business. But we haven't even gotten to the opportunity part yet that I am creating by virtue of doing this. And this, what I'm gonna be getting to with the opportunity is something you have to here, so just stick around. Then I got the, the bottle, the, the bottle, the uh, engraved thing to him. And by the way, the slogan that was personalized to his wife, Stephanie, says, Stephanie needs wine. That's what Stephanie says when she's frustrated. Okay, so very personalized. Well, this guy has got his store is the 25th anniversary. So he said, can, can you like make a 25 for me? I said, well, yeah, what do, you, what do you want? And so he started to explain it. And it you know, turned, turned out to be pretty much this. He wanted two of them so he could hang them in his uh, store where he could uh, put lights around it and celebrate his 25th. I said, yeah. So I drew it up on my computer and took it to him. And he's, he's like, that's exactly what I was thinking in my mind. This is very subtle um, score building, right? I, I gave him exactly what he was thinking. But now, we're taking it to the next level. Okay, extra value. So now he's got this. He doesn't know about this yet, right? This is the gift in it. And he can hang it above that, of the 25, whatever he wants to do with it. I don't care. I had a little extra material, I gave him a little extra thing. That's gonna build up more value. All right, let's get into the opportunity aspect of this. Right, this is a $60 job. It's chump change when it comes to business. Okay, you, you want $1,000 jobs, $10,000 jobs. And yes, in this industry, you can get them. The thing is, he's a framing shop that's been in business for 25 years. He's got a huge customer base of people who are willing to drop down $500 to frame a single picture. So his clientele network has money. And over that period of time, th there's this huge network that I can tap into, but I need his consent, if we will, to tap into that network. But something even more important is happening that you need to get as well. This guy has rented a three garage space because he doesn't have enough room for his framing shop anymore. But he's, the space is like way too much, right? So he said, you know, I mean, maybe we can work together. You know, you pay me 50 bucks a month and you can use one of the bays. But he's doing something else. He's starting to think, how can I use this guy, Garrett, to tap into his business, to uh, add more value to his business, more product base, more things like that, which is actually like turning, will turn into business for me, right? And, and will make his business better. So by virtue of my skill and the value I've been giving him, he's starting to think about all these different things that he can do with your CNC skill that you're gonna build as you're building these relationship foundations. So get to know people, build rapport with them first. Do not go in with a lack of integrity because they're going to see right through it. 
and you're going to you're going to lose it. I and mean, of course, it's going to be kind of a learning process. That's okay. But this is the whole way that that this is building, where the jobs are starting to come to me. That's not the only way it happened. It, it did happen with this as well. Money off of that. I you know, also with the with this um, 25, right? I cut it out of this. I'm not making money off this job. This is a long game type of thing. This is the way you have to think. Okay, I'm going to go into them and say, you know what, I'm going to give you this and this for 30 bucks. You know, because it's, it's, it's a friend thing, right? But the business behind that is huge. And that's the long game thing, the way to think about it. Materials cost me uh, about 15 eighteen dollars charging thirty bucks I'm making twelve dollars off that minus the four or five hours it took me to fart around with the darn thing come up the design go down and show them blah 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 I'm not making anything off of this okay it's costing me in the short game in the long game it's gonna really pay off I got it on top of that on top of that now I've gone into a new niche right on my Etsy store now I can sell huge letters Twenty dollars a letter. Yes, that's what you charge. And by virtue of that cutout of that two and that five, I got these I can sell on Etsy. You know, I can make more of these. It, I mean, this is the way it works. Okay, this has no business being on a router, but that's what I got. You work with what you have until you can get to where you want to go. I'm getting a laser. The thing is, getting back to the very important aspect: build the relationships. Without doing that, you will always struggle with a business. So if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have suggestions, make comments down below. And of course, subscribe if you're interested in earning an income on your CNC equipment. And uh, join that Facebook group. Thanks for taking all the time to watch. I hope these tips have uh, given you a little bit of the meat of real business so you can get your CNC interest into a really lucrative money-making business in the long game. This is Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. I will see you later.